Hello everyone. In part 3 of this Pathways series, you will learn about the basics of Pathways Pathway Architecture and how to create your very own Pathways Pathway. Before watching this video, be sure to watch the previous episodes, Pathways Part 1 and Pathways Part 2, as these videos cover basic navigation, browsing, pathway replication, and pathway propagation features in the web server. They also provide an overview of how to use Pathways' drawing canvas, which will not be discussed in this video. As you may recall in part 2 of the Pathways series, we learned how to replicate and propagate Pathways with Pathways. We have also learned some basic editing concepts that are part of Pathways' drawing canvas. The replicate and propagate features are really useful if we want to copy or propagate existing Pathways pathways. However, if you want to make an entirely new pathway that is not found in the Pathways repository, then you have to create a new pathway. Now let's get started with the tutorial. First, let's review the architecture that makes up a simple Pathways pathway. In Pathways, Pathway generation is like drawing or painting a picture. When creating a pathway in Pathways, you are given a blank canvas where you can draw or paint your pathway. Most artists have a palette of paints, brushes, pastels, color pencils, or objects from which they can choose to add to their artwork. This is very similar to Pathways. Using Pathways' palette, you can add an array of different pre-generated components to your pathway, or you can add your own unique components to your pathway. These components are organized into three categories. The first category is elements, which include compounds, element collections, nucleic acids, protein complexes, proteins, and bound elements. The second category is processes, which include reactions, interactions, transport, and reaction-coupled transports. Finally, the last category is other data, which include biological states, species, tissues, cell types, subcellular locations, and drawable images. Thus, the architecture of a pathways pathway can be described as being made up of various components which include elements, processes, and other data. Pathways are constructed using a combination of these individual components, which are then connected together via arrows to make detailed pathway diagrams. You can make your pathway as complex as you want it to be by adding as many components as you think are necessary. That concludes our discussion of Pathways' pathway architecture. Now, let's start creating a pathway that corresponds to the citric acid cycle, or TCA cycle, in Homo sapiens. Let's head over to the home page and click on the Draw tab. Next, click on the New Pathway button. This creates a new instance of a pathway which will be shared on the public repository in the web server once created. As you can see here, the areas marked with the red star indicate required fields. I have named our pathway the Citric Acid Cycle Tutorial, Selective Metabolism, and listed it under as Homo Sapiens. Scrolling down the page are a list of optional fields that we can fill in or edit, which include Guest Identifier, Description, Create from Pathway Entry, Its E Value, and Toggling if it contains reviewed Uniprot proteins are proteins that are not found from Uniprot. Under the References section, we can add references by clicking the Add References button. Here, we can enter a citation manually or provide its PubMed ID, which automatically generates the citation. This tool is incredibly useful if we want to link a pathway to a published article. Now, let's start building our TCA pathway. As you may recall, the TCA cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, is made up of 11 reactions, as seen in this Wikipedia diagram below. 
When making a pathway, it is recommended that you add these components in the following order. First, add your reactions. Then, add your visual elements, which include membrane, organelles, and compounds. Finally, add your labels and subpathways, if necessary. Let's just start adding our first reaction. On the canvas, click Add Process, followed by Add Reaction. Here you can add your reaction by typing its reactants on the search bar. Once your reactant is typed in, Pathways will quickly search through its database and return a list of similar reactions. By scrolling down the list, the first TCA reaction in humans can be found here. Be sure to select the reaction that belongs to Homo sapiens, as noted in parentheses. In some cases, if a reaction is not listed in the Pathways repository, we can add our reaction manually by clicking the New Reaction button. Here, we can specify the left and right elements, direction, and spontaneity of the reaction. When adding elements, it's stoichiometry, element type, an element name must be specified. If our element is not listed, click Add Element, which follows the same procedures. Clicking the Create Reaction button on the New Reaction page redirects us back to the Add Reaction page. Once selected, you will find that our newly added reaction is placed as an additional option in the search bar. Going back to the Add Reaction page, you can also add an enzyme by clicking the Add Enzyme button and type its name in the search bar. In addition, you can specify the reaction's biological state and how the reaction should be rendered on the drawing canvas by customizing these options. When you're done with your reaction settings, click on Create Reaction. Clicking Create Reaction adds your reaction into the drawing canvas. Here, we can move and position the reaction elements around the canvas to our liking. We can select one or more elements at a time by selecting each element one by one, or we can use the cursor to draw a box around the elements. Selected elements are marked in red and can be dragged across the canvas by using your mouse or touchpad. You can also edit the information associated with a specific element by double-clicking it and accessing its fields as we saw in the previous video in Pathways Part 2. By clicking the reaction hyperlinked in blue, we can alter or change certain fields, the respective Z indices, and toggle if we want them shown or hidden in the drawing canvas if we click on the highlighted reaction. Moving the selected reaction over to the desired position, we can also change how the arrows are directed towards different reaction elements. By clicking and holding the arrow, we can change the position where it points and its orientation by adjusting its vectors located on the side. Once you have completed adding the first reaction, we're ready to start by adding the second reaction. We need to make sure that the second reaction is added in a way that links to the previous reaction we have just made. To do so, select the last product of the first reaction, acetyl-CoA. This should toggle the color of the component to red. Once selected, click Add Reaction under the Add Processes tab and repeat what we did earlier when we added our first reaction, only this time with our second reaction. Once a second reaction has been added, we can move it around the drawing canvas and change the position of the arrows to its respective components, just as we did earlier in our first reaction. We can repeat these reaction creation and positioning steps for each of the remaining nine reactions. Here's a sped up version of the creation of those reactions. Now that we have added all our reactions, the next step is to add our visual elements. Visual elements include cellular components, such as inner and outer membranes, organelles, organs, or tissues, and labels. Remember that the TCA cycle takes place in the mitochondria, so let's add our mitochondrial membranes. On the Add Visual Element tab, click Add Membrane. 
Upon clicking, this expands the side menu and generates a plasma memory image by default on the drawing canvas. On the drawing palette, click on the scroll bar and select the red mitochondrial membrane template. We can drag this image across the canvas and add another edge by clicking the blue box. Here's a sped up version of the creation of those visual elements. Now that we have added all our visual elements, the next step is to add labels and subpathways if necessary. Labels can be added by clicking the Add Visual Element tab and selecting Add Label. You can specify what's in the label by double clicking it and entering the text in this box as located on the sidebar. Adding labels is a great way to describe what's happening in different regions and different membranes that appear on the canvas. We can also add organelles by clicking the Add Image tab under the Add Visual Element option. Clicking generates a mitochondrial organelle. We can add a zoom box to indicate that this pathway occurs mostly within the mitochondria by selecting the Add Zoom box under the Add Visual Element tab. In addition, subpathways can also be added to provide additional pathway information to our main pathway or to reduce the complexity of the main pathway. Subpathways are typically additional pathways that feed into or feed out of the main pathway. Simply click the Add Process tab and choose Add Subpathway. A subpathway can be selected here. Render it in whatever way you prefer, generate it, and move it across the drawing canvas to your liking. Now that we have added our reactions, visual elements, labels, and subpathways, our pathway is complete. We have the option of publishing our pathway to the PathWiz web server by making it public, or we can choose to download a high resolution image of our pathway. Click on the Show tab and then click on the Generate Image Files. Based on your preferences, this action will generate a high resolution picture of your pathway. This is what our final pathway looks like. In summary, we learned about PathWiz's basic pathway architecture and learned how to create a pathway from scratch using PathWiz's drawing canvas. I hope you found this tutorial useful and please stay tuned for more videos to come.